Will? Feel? Oh, I said Will. She was a pastor. Is she still a pastor? You know she was on Atlanta preacher. Preachers of Atlanta. Yep. Yep. That's that was yep. That was when yep. I was like, mm, Happy Mother's Day, Pastor. Yep. And then she was on Periscope drunk, cursing like a fool. And it's like, girl. Okay, you do that at your house, but don't get on nothing public. No. Not you a whole nut. Can you play center of my drawer?
take that down. the music in the meadows and the streams the voices of the children my family and my home you're the source and finish
Tim, what you say this morning? The song that I uh, I lead for offering. You said it was on my mind this morning. Jesus is good. Can you play Greatest Man? You remember how to play Greatest, greatest man. man? Or you know what key that's in? That is old. <laughs>
If you like that sound, go ahead and stand up. If you can't stand up, Deacon Cannon, just, just shake. I see you rocking. That's all right. Go ahead and get the spirit in this place. Because you know this is the day that the Lord has made. How many of y'all know that? If you know it, go ahead and clap your hands. Get a little excited. It's okay. Excitement is allowed in the church. He didn't say come and be born in the church. We said go ahead and rejoice. Amen. Amen. It's good to see y'all. It's good to see y'all. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Philadelphia. The Bible says this day is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. And we just thank God for being here. Thank God for being here. So let's go ahead and open up the word of prayer. And uh, the Spirit of God is already in this place as the prayer, uh, the, 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 the praise team sings so beautifully and the music is played. And you brought him with you. How many of y'all know you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? So God is already in this place. And Father, we just, uh, uh, just want to lift you up. So, God, we ask, Father, that you have your way. Have your way, God. We come together, God, just to rehearse um, your worship, to re rehearse your word. Father, just to revitalize ourselves that our mission, Father, is to save those that are lost, to evangelize this world, God, and disciple non-believers that they might be fully committed followers of you, God. That's our mission, God. So, Father, today, Father, we just ask, God, if there's anything in us unlike you, any worries, any concerns, anything on our mind, God, that affects our thoughts and uh, our availability to you, God. Take it away, Lord. Oh, God, that aunt, uncle, or any family issues, God, we ask you to take it out of our mind right now. We want to focus on you, our relationship with you. God, have your way in our lives. Have your way in our minds, God. If there's sick among us, Father, we thank you that you are a healer. You are a deliverer. So, God, we ask, Lord, today that you have your way in this place. Father, speak through our leader. Send a fresh word, a ram of word, God, a word that we can use, God, a word that will benefit us, God, a word, God, that will help us to be more like you, to be Christ-like. So, Father, we thank you, God. We thank you for every ministry that will be in operation, God. We ask that we operate in, 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 a, in a pure heart, Father, that you might get all the glory, get all the praise. Father, we pray for those that are yet on their way, God. We pray for safe travels, God, that they would get here safely, God. We pray for ministries everywhere where your word is going forth, God. Pray for men uh, that, that are preaching your word from the pulpit, God, and those that will be hearing, God. Father, we pray for our leader. As he has told all week, God, Father, that you speak through him, God, and I ask that he decrease, that you might increase in him now. Send your word, Lord. 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 Send your word, Father. God, help us to have a heart and a mind to receive your word. And Father, help it to fall on good ground, God, that it may take a root and grow. We love you and we magnify you, and it's in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, somebody ought to praise the Lord on today. Amen. We come to bless the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Hey.
in your best praise. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. We magnify your name, Jesus. We glorify you, Jesus. It's all right to begin to worship him. Don't worry about who's here. Hallelujah. Sometimes God wants to know, are you ashamed of me? Will you praise me in front of man? Amen. Don't worry about circumstances or situations. Hallelujah. Lord God, I thank you. I thank you for that thing that you just brought me out of. Lord God, I thank you for how you spared my life when I should have been dead. Lord God, I thank you for Jesus dying on Calvary's cross. Hallelujah. 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 My hallelujah belongs to you. Yes, God. My hallelujah belongs to you. Bless your name, Jesus. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs.
once again to our PBC morning worship. Amen. God has been good all week long, and we're just so grateful to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. So let's give the Lord one more hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. If you're visiting with us for the very first time, would you wave your hand? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. We clap our hands. Well, that's, that's my guest in the house, my guest in the house, amen. Uh, we thank you so much, uh, Brother Michael, for joining us today. And uh, please, please be join us anytime. We worship every Sunday at 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock a.m. Amen. At this time, would you just, uh, PPC, just wave your hand at everyone and let them know you're glad to see them on today. Amen. 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 At this time, you all may be seated. You all may be seated. Um, just for those of you who are watching by way of online, I mean, we apologize. We apologize on last week. Last week, we ran into some technical difficulties, technical difficulties. And so we hope that everything is corrected this week, amen, so that you, well, you can tune in and never miss a beat. So if, you, if you're on, if this, everything is working, would you just give me a thumbs up? Give me a thumbs up at home. Let us know that everything is well. And do me a favor, would you, whatever platform you're viewing us this morning, would you like us? Would you like us? Would you also share? Share. You just never know how many people you can bless by sharing. And also comment, comment, and subscribe, subscribe. We have a YouTube channel. Um, and so uh, our services are displayed also uh, through YouTube. We're not able to go live through YouTube, but you can see uh, the replay. If you missed the service by any chance um, at our normal hour at 10 o'clock, you can always view the service a little bit later, or you can check it out the next day on your way to work. So thank God for technology, and thank God for everything that he's doing uh, to move the church forward, to move the church forward. And we thank you so much for being a participant. Amen. And we just pray for God's blessings upon each one of you, each one of you. We have some sick and shut in, um, and we just want to keep all of our members in prayer as we move forward. At this time, we're going to receive none other than our praise team. Our praise team is going to come for us today. And also, we're going to be preparing the Lord's Supper, the Lord's Supper uh, uh, later on in the service. So those of you who are watching uh, at home, uh, please feel free to get your elements ready elements ready um, so that way when it's time you'll be ready to go you'll be ready to go uh, just get some bread get some bread if you don't have bread you can get some crackers saltine crackers or uh, whatever you have at your house and you know whatever you know your, your preference of beverage or whatever uh, so that you can join us for the Lord's Supper amen at this time let's give our praise team a hand clap as they come and minister Jesus, you're the center of my joy. Shatters on my fears. Wait. 
Peter chapter 2 and verse 21, it says, for you were called to this because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. Verse 22 says, he did not commit sin and no deceit was found in his mouth.
series study from last Sunday, how to be a model Christian in the workplace, how to be a model Christian in the workplace. Father, I ask that you speak a word today. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. If you're visiting with us uh, for the first time, if you're just checking out our um, online service, we, you can also find a um, outline on the website, an outline on the website um, at philadelphiabaptistchurch.net, and you can find a website, I mean, you can find an outline there. Amen. But in First Peter, we, we've been in First Peter, and First Peter is a book that is written by none other than the Apostle Peter. He's written, it's written by Peter. Um, it's, this letter is written to Christians in general, Christians who were going through a rough time. They were going through uh, trials and tribulations. They were going through uh, difficult times. Just by show of hands, uh, how many of you are going through difficult times? How many of you, you're going through hard times? Um, you're watching by way of online, just give me a virtual hand. So trials are nothing new. Trials are are, 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 are normal. Tribulations are normal. It's part of the Christian life. As a matter of fact, Peter mentions a word suffering various times in this particular letter, suffering. Uh, but he also mentions the word grace. He also mentions the word grace several times. And, and you can either focus on your suffering or you can focus on grace. What messes many people up is oftentimes they focus more on their suffering than the grace of God. But grace will see you through a difficult time. Grace will see you through trials and tribulations. And so we come to 1 Peter, and he's, he's in chapter 1, he's dealing with this issue of salvation. He's saying, man, you know, as God has done all these wonderful things for you as a believer, or before, as a matter of fact, before you as a believer, and uh, we have wonderful benefits of salvation. There's wonderful benefits in this salvation. And then in chapter 2, Paul, I'm not Paul, I'm so used to saying Paul because he, he wrote most of the New Testament. But Peter, uh, he he's, he's comes to chapter 2 and he, and he lists several duties that you ought to be aware of, several duties. Uh, so as you go through 1 Peter chapter 2, I want to point out six duties from the apostle Peter. First of all, verses 1 through 2, there is a duty to the scriptures, a duty to the scriptures, a duty to the scriptures. As a Christian, talking to Christians, uh, there is a duty to the scriptures. What is your duty to the scriptures as a Christian? Here it is. You know what verses 1 and 2 says? It says, like newborn babies crave or desire or long for the pure milk of the word of God. In other words, if you're going to grow as a Christian, you got to crave the word of God. You got to crave the word of God. You want to know the reason why some people don't grow healthy? It's because their diet is off point. It's off point. But you got to, you got to, you got to, you got to desire the word of God. But here's the second thing. Verses 3 through 8, there is a duty to the Savior, a duty to the Savior. Not only do you have a duty to Christian, to, to, to the Scriptures, but you have a duty to the Savior. And that's what verses 8, 3 through 8 talks about. And, and in other words, what Peter is saying is that as a Christian, you got to stay attached to Jesus, you got to stay attached to Jesus. Say that with me. I must stay attached to Jesus. Because when hard times come, if you don't stay attached to Jesus, it's going to be trouble, trouble. So you got to stay attached to Jesus. But then verses 9 to 12, we see the duty for the saints, the duty for the saints, the duty for the saints in verses 9 through 12. And in verses 9 through 12, he says things like this. You are a chosen race. 
You're chosen. Man, God chose you and I on his team. Isn't that amazing? He chose you to be on his team. He says, not only are you a chosen race, but you're a royal priesthood. You're a kingdom priest. He says, you are a, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. That's who you are. Then verse, look at verse um, verse 11, he says, I urge you as aliens and strangers. There it is again. So that's, that's your, your, the duty for the saints. Duty for the saints. You're a chosen nation. You're a royal priesthood. You're a people for God's own possession. You, 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 are, you, are, you are an alien. You are a stranger in this world. And then we come to verses 13 through 17, and we see the duty to the state, the duty to the state. Verses 13 through 17, the duty to the state. You know what he's saying right here? He's saying, as a Christian, as a child of God, as a believer, you and I have a, have a duty to follow the state, the government. We may not like it, but we're to submit. We may not like the police, but watch what? We must what? Submit. We may not like the teachers, but we are to submit. We may not like uh, the judge, but we are to what? Submit. That's the duty. That's the duty. Because he says in verse 13, you got to submit to every human institution. As a believer, God has called you and I to submit. And what messes many people up is we're raising a culture that wants to buck at authority. We're raising children who want to buck at the parents. We're raising children who want to buck at the teacher. We're raising t t t uh, children that want to buck at the police. We're raising children that want to buck at the judge. We're raising children who want to buck at God. <laughs> but as a child of God, you got to, you got, you, you, there's a duty to the state. All right, y'all don't like that one? Let me, let me move on. Verse 18 through 20, there's a duty to your specialty. That's your, that's your job, the duty to your specialty. That's your job. And as believers in Jesus Christ, you may not like your job. You may not like your employer, but you still got to do what you got to do. Amen and amen again. Excuse my grammar. But you got a duty. You got a duty. And, and we, it, we, this is what we, we talked about last week. We, we learned one thing, and that is do excellent work wherever God places you. Wherever God, don't say that you are a Christian and you are a, an electrician and you go to people's house and you leave wires just hanging everywhere. Amen. Don't go on a job and say that I'm a child of God and you are a cook and you cook nasty food. <laughs> I'm, I'm just joking, y'all. But, but what I'm saying is that everything that you do for God, it, it ought to be done in a spirit of excellence. Duty for your specialty. You got to do good to the cruel boss, to the mean boss. Why? Because it models grace. It, it pleases God. And then the final thing well, we see in this chapter is 21 through 25, the duty to suffer. The duty to suffer. And, 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 and that's what I want to, I want to kind of continue what we, what we deal with, dealt with last week. It's in the context of the workplace. But this, is, this applies in so many different areas, in so many different areas. So let me give you a couple things this morning. How to be a model Christian in the workplace, part two. Number one, number one, realize as a Christian, you are called to suffer. As a Christian, look at verse 21. Peter, he, he's about to give the example of Jesus. He says this. Verse 21 says, For you have been called. Hey. 
that's part of God's plan. Part of God's plan as children of God is, watch this, is for you and I to suffer. You see, you see right here it says, look at it. The next part of the verse says, since Christ also suffered for you. Do you see that? Just making sure y'all, y'all not thinking I'm making this up. Since Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example for you to follow in his steps. You see that? Now, you remember Jesus said in John 16, 33, he said what? In this world, you're going to have what? Tribulations. That means every day is not going to be peaches and cream. Every day is not going to be roses. Every day is not going to be all uh, 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 sunshine. But there are going to be some dark and gloomy days. There are going to be some days where you don't feel this thing. But as a Christian, you got to realize that you are called to suffer. I'm amazed that so many Christians today don't know that they are called to suffer. Many people think that just because they became a Christian that all their problems are going to go away. No, all your problems ain't going away. It's just that when you become a child of God, you just, be, know, you just begin to know how to deal with your problems. Being a Christian just helps you to deal with problems when they, when they come. Being a Christian helps you to just deal with unruly children. Being a Christian just helps you to deal with a, a rocky roller coaster marriage. Being a Christian just helps you to deal with unruly grandchildren. Being a Christian just helps you to deal with an unruly boss. It's a Christian. You're called. To suffer. And in the context of our text today, don't think it's strange when God assigns you to a position on in, in, your, in the workplace where you got to go through some suffering. You got to go through some suffering. Why do you got to suffer? Because Christ suffered for you. He suffered for you. All right. I know you don't like that one. I know you don't like that one. But that's good. That's good. I just want to I just want to be faithful. I want to be faithful. Number two, here's number two. Realize as a Christian, number two, you are called to sainthood. Sainthood. As a Christian, you are called to live as a like live like a saint. Now, Shamika Britt, I'm not talking about the New Orleans Saints. <laughs> I'm not talking about the New Orleans. Anybody, any New Orleans Saints fans? Okay. Okay. They're not in here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I just went to New Orleans a couple weeks, uh, you know, some weeks ago. And, uh, and, I, and I was, I was, I saw on, um, Bur- it was Bourbon Street, I believe. Uh, it, it had 28 to 3. Y'all remember that? The Falcons. It had 28 to 3. It was, it was, it was, it, it brought back memories. But but New Orleans, they 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 hate Atlanta Falcons fans. But now Peter's not calling us to be New Orleans saints, but he's calling us to to live like a saint. Look at verse twenty two. Verse twenty two says he's talking about Jesus. He says, "Who committed no sin, nor was any deceit found in his mouth." Now he's quoting Isaiah fifty nine verse three. You remember in Isaiah 53, he's talking about the suffering servant. And Isaiah, he foretold this this prophecy over 700 years in advance that Christ, God's anointed servant, would have to suffer. Now, if anyone has the the right to, to not suffer, guess who it was? Christ. Because why? He didn't do nothing wrong. Verse 22 says, who committed no sin, nor was any deceit found in his mouth. You know what he's saying? He's saying Jesus was sinless. He was sinless. Now, none of us in here have lived a sinless life. Let me, let me, just, let me, just, let me just do this. How many of you have ever lied before? Just by a show of hands, raise your hand. That's everybody. If you virtual, how many, how many of you told a lie? Just give me a virtual hand, virtual hand. Okay. How many of you have, 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 have stolen before? 
Anybody stolen? Okay. You're taking something that's not yours. Okay. Same thing online. If you, you, you give me a virtual hand if you've stolen before. All right. How many of you have committed murder? Hmm. Wow. <laughs> None of us in here. None of us in here. All right. I know most of us, if, if we were in here, we wouldn't want to say it. <laughs> All right. But how many of you have had the thought of committing murder? How many of you, how many of you, you had some hate or some envy that you wanted the person destroyed in your life? Now, just give me the hands up. All right, hands up, hands up. If you're on virtual, give me hands up. You see, sometimes, now, God has to bring this thing home. He says, if I were to judge you by that standard, would you be innocent or guilty? Most of us would be guilty. So what, what, my, all of us in here have done something that where we've missed the mark. Now, Jesus was sinless, but none of us can be, ever be sinless. But God has called you and I to start sinning less. You ought to be sinning less than you were last year. You ought to be sinning less than you were last month. You ought to be sinning less than you were last week. That's the Christian life. Day by day, you ought to be growing to be more like Jesus. As a Christian on your job, you ought to be trying to be a little bit better than you were last week. As a Christian, you ought to be a little bit better in your home than you were last week. You see, as a Christian, God has called you and I to sainthood. The sainthood is not for monks, but it's for children of God to live as saints, as saints. Why? Because Christ is our example. He committed no sin. He was innocent. And although you're not perfect, you can still be loving to others. Although you're not perfect, you can still be kind and thoughtful to others. Although you're not all the way innocent, you can still be a good grandfather, a good grandmother, a good student, a good employee, a good employer. He's called you and I to sainthood. All right, number three, number three. Number one, God has called you and I to what? Suffer. Number two, God has called you and I to what? Sainthood. Here's number three. Realize as a Christian, God has called you and I to self-control. 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 Look at verse 23. It says this. And while being reviled, what did Christ do? He did not revile in return. <laughs> Y'all see this is different from the real housewives of Atlanta. All right. <laughs> so this, this is different than the, the real housewives of L.A. While being reviled, he did not what? Revile in return. While suffering, he uttered no threats. But he kept entrusting himself to him who what? Judges righteously. <laughs> There's only one who judges all the way perfectly, and that's God. But what's another word for revile? Insult. Slander. In other words, Jesus was insulted. Guess what? He didn't insult back in return. I know you want to go there with some folks. I know you want to. I know you want to get on their level, but you gotta have a little bit of self-control. Preach, Pastor Quincy. I know you want to give somebody a piece of your mind, but sometimes. You got to have a little bit of self-control. You got to have a little bit of self-control. This is a mark of what it means to be a Christian. Self-control. 
control. Now, let me just clarify what he is not saying. He's not saying that as a Christian, you just be passive and you allow people to walk all over you and you never say nothing. He's, he's, he, he's not saying that this, this verse doesn't mean that you just got to take abuse from people day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. No, he's not saying that. But what this verse is, is saying is that some things you got to realize ain't worth the headache. Some things ain't worth the headache. Some things in life, you just got to realize that God is going to work it out. When folks take you there, you don't have to go there. When folks shoot you a bird on I-20, you don't have to shoot a birdie back at them. You got to exercise self-control. I know you employers don't see eye to eye in some things. I, I, I know you, but you still got to show up at work on time. I know you don't see eye to eye with this person, this uh, department head or this or that, but you still got to exercise what? Self-control. That's a mark of the Christian is self-control. Because people are watching your life more than they are reading the Bible. And if they see you always going off, always losing your cool, well, realize Jesus, when he was talked about, he realized that he kept entrusting himself to God to God who judges righteous. Watch this. God sees all. Don't worry about paying folks back. I'm going to get payback. Uh-uh. No. Lee, vengeance is the Lord's. Vengeance is the Lord. All right, let me move on. Number one, as a Christian, you're called to what? Number one, suffer. Number two, as a Christian, you're called to what? Sainthood. Number three, as a Christian, you're called to what? Here's a good one right here. Realize as a Christian, you are called to, to be selfless. As a Christian, you are called to be selfless. Not selfish, but selfless. Verse 24, look at it. It says, and he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross. So that we might die to sin and live to right. There it is. As a Christian, Christ died on the cross so that we might what? Die to sin. Y'all see that? As a Christian, I, I, I talk to so many people, and they say, you know what, they live any kind of way because of grace, and I get grace, there is grace. But as a Christian, God has called you to die to sin and live to what? Righteousness, to righteousness. For by his wounds, you were healed. For by his wounds, you were healed. He's talking about uh, spiritual, Be, because we were we were going we were going astray. We were we were we were headed to a devil's hell, but by his wounds, because of Jesus, what he his his death his his death on the cross, you were healed. You are forgiven. You are redeemed. You are saved. Because I rather go to heaven. See, let me say it like this. You can go to heaven with a throat back. If your soul is right. Y'all see what I'm saying? You can go to heaven if, 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 you, if you got an ailment in your body. But there are going to be some people who bust hell wide open with ailments in their body because they didn't receive the, the free grace of Jesus Christ. 
It says, and he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live to what? Righteousness. For by his wounds you were here. Where do you see Christ being selfless right here? Where do you see Christ being selfless? He himself what? Bore our sins in his body. He could have been like, nah, I'm going to let T.O. do it. He could have been like, nah, I'm going to let Quincy do it. No, Jesus took it upon himself when nobody else, he took the initiative. Christ was selfless. One of our problems in our culture today, we're selfish. It's my way or the highway. And one of the reasons why we struggle in our marriages is because it's my way or the highway. One of the reasons why we struggle in our jobs is it's my way or the highway. One of the reasons why we struggle in other relationships in our life is my way or the highway. One of the reasons why the church can't move forward is because it's my way not or the highway. But God is calling you and I to be self. As a cup of tea. Is it that hard to fix her a cup of tea? If your husband asks for some a bowl of ice cream, is it that hard to, to, to get them a bowl of ice cream? If your children ask you to rub their <laughs> I see people say, yeah, that's hard. <laughs> Oh, man, I was just messing. <laughs> no, but as a Christian, though, you're called to be selfless. As a, as selfless. Look out for others more than yourself. Not saying that you, you're not saying that you neglect yourself. No, 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 I'm not talking about that. But you got to look out for others. You got to sometimes take the focus off of you and your wants and your desires and put them on other people. That's the principle that we learn from this verse. As a Christian, you are called to be selfless in the workplace. Here's number five. Number one, as a Christian, you're called to what? Suffer. Number two, you're called to what? Sainthood. Number three, you're called to what? Self-control. Number four, you're called to what? Called to be selfless. Here's number five. Number five. Number five, realize as a Christian, you are called to look to the shepherd. You're called to look to the shepherd. I remember as a, as a child, um, don't seem that long ago, um, I don't realize how made I had it. You see that Gabby, Brianna? Quincy, Chloe, Kate, Kate. You, you, you don't realize how made you have it. I mean, life was easy. Anybody remember their childhood? And it was just like, man, you, you, you woke up and you played outside most of the day. You know, into dark. And when it was dark, you came in. I know that's different than in our culture today. The children, they, they don't know anything about outside. They don't know anything about mosquito bites and, you know, going in the woods and, you know, getting in trouble for going in the woods. Now they're scared to go to the woods. <laughs> but, but you think about it now, it, as, a, as a child, you had no worries. I remember my dad and mom, um, they would go to the store and they would, man, spend money on groceries and then they would come home and I, we would sometimes eat the food and, and uh, I always remember, you know, sometimes, you know, I would, as a child, throw away certain food. And then my mom and dad would get on me about, man, why are you throwing away food? This, this food costs. And then when you're older, you start to realize that, look, you, boy, you, you don't, girl, you don't, mm -mm, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't waste this food. 
You don't fix a big plate and then, you, oh, because you don't like it, you just throw it in the trash can. But we had it made. I mean, if I wanted some shoes, they would take me to the store and, and they would go and I would, you know, take me and my brothers and my sisters and, and, and they would buy us what we needed. But I had no worries. All I had to do was go to school. All I had to do was go to school. That was my job. Go to school, make something out of yourself. And that's the responsibility of a dad. That's the responsibility of a mom is to take care of the family spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, so that way they can thrive. And the responsibility of a dad is to protect his child. To, it's the responsibility of the mother is to nurture the child because they really don't know what life is about at 10. They really don't know uh, what life is about at, at 11 or 12 or 13 or 14. So you got to guide them along the way. Why? Because children, they think they know it all when they get 15, 14, 16. They, they, they really do believe they know it all, even 17 or 18. I look back when I was 18, I, I felt like I knew it all. <laughs> but little did I know. And that's what life will teach you as you get older and older and older. You begin to grow more and more. That's why you ought to listen to older people, people who are older than you. Because they got a little bit, sometimes they got a little bit more wisdom that you can learn. Likewise, as a Christian, you and I are called to look to the shepherd. Because we are like children, as Peter says, look at it, verse 25 says, continually straying like what? Sheep. But now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. What does a shepherd do? A shepherd protects, feeds, guides. And what does Jesus do for you and I? He feeds you. He, get, he puts grits on your table. He puts bacon on your plate. He puts oatmeal in your bowl. He, he provides for you. He gives you the Louis Vuitton purse that you've always wanted. He provides shoes for you. He provides a car shelter for you. That's what Jesus does. He also leads you. He guides you. When you don't know which way to go, he tells you which way to go. Proverbs 3 says, and if, if you will acknowledge him, he will direct. That's what Jesus does for you. When you don't know which way to go, he will tell you which way to go. Then watch, watch it. Verse, what Peter calls him in verse 25, he says, but now you have returned to the Shepherd and guardian. Guardian. That, that word right there is, is, is sometimes translated as overseer. It's the word that from which we get the word bishop, episcopos. That's the word. In other words, Jesus is the bishop. Jesus is the overseer. Jesus is our guardian. And what does a bishop do? A bishop oversees. A bishop guards. A bishop is a guardian. That's what Jesus does for you. He's your shepherd. He's your guardian. And I don't care how many guns you own. Jesus is the one who protects you and guards your life. He is your overseer. I don't care what kind of alarm system you have. You may have uh, uh, what's that alarm system called? ADT or what's the other one called? Ackerman. I don't care how many alarm systems you have. Jesus is your guardian. Jesus is the one who protects your life. My brothers and my sisters, when you're going through difficult times in your life, you're going to have to look to the shepherd. When you're going through difficult times, trials and tribulations in your life, you're going to have to look to the shepherd. When you're going through issues on, on your job and you don't know which way to go or which way to turn, you're going to have to look to the shepherd from whence comes your help. 
Students, you may be in school and you're struggling. You're struggling to, 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 to make good grades. And, you, you, you know, your teacher, you know, you, you, you all having some issues. You, you're afraid to talk to your teacher or your teacher. You feel it's not being fair or whatever. But you're going to have to sometimes look to the shepherd and guardian of your soul. You may be going through a, a difficult financial season in your life. You may not know where the money is going to come from or where this is going to come, but you got to look to the shepherd. Things may not be looking up for you. Things may be looking down, but you are going to have to look to the shepherd. When that marriage is not where it needs to go, you need to look to the shepherd, why? You're asking, should I look to the shepherd? Why should I look to the shepherd? Um, one thing I know about the shepherd, one thing I know about the shepherd is this. This is about to blow your mind. This is what you need to know. Whenever you're going through difficult times, the shepherd is always and on time God. <laughs> he may not come when you want him, but he is right on time. When things are looking gloomy, when things are looking doomy, the shepherd is all right there on time. When you don't know which way to go, which way to turn, Shepherd is there right on time. Does anybody know his name? His name is Jesus. Jesus is the lily of the valley and the bright and morning star. He will pick you up when you're down. His name is Jesus. Stand to your feet. Let's clap our hands all over the building. All over the building. All over the building. Got to realize, as a Christian, you are your call to suffer. But the best thing about it, even when you're going through suffering, God's grace will see you through it. Anybody ever gone through a suffering season, and and God's grace is just by show of hands, show of hands, show of hands, amen. Amen. There was a difficult time in your life, and you saw that the Lord has brought you through it. You see, there's living testimonies, living testimonies right here. If you're watching online, if you've been through a difficult season, and the Lord has brought you through it, you can testify too. Testify. Because somebody needs to hear your testimony. Then he's called you to sainthood. Just live like a Christian. You're not going to live perfect. You can't live perfect. You can't live sinless, but you can sin a little bit less. That's what God has called you to. He's called you to sainthood. He's called you to suffer. He's called you to, uh, he's called you to, to, to look to the shepherd. He's called you to look to the shepherd. He's called you to look to him when you don't know where, where to go, where to turn. He's called you to look to the shepherd. He's called you to be selfless. selfless. Stop thinking that this thing is all about you. And put it on Christ. Because when you, when you focus on Christ, your, all your relationships will be intact. They'll be intact. You know, that's why I said last week, Every boss, every employer should take off Sundays. If they don't go to church, they need to go to church to, 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 to scout out employees. Because if they get a person at church, they know they're going to have a good, selfless, uh, saint Christian on the job. On the job is not the time to be carrying your Bible. Why are you supposed to be working? 
Y'all do know that, right? Okay. Even though you're doing, you say I'm doing it for God, but that's not the time. That's not the place. The job, you would be being an effective worker. Because when you're an effective worker, people begin to see, oh, wow. Why are you so an effective worker? Well, because you know what? I serve Christ. I'm a Christian. Sister Ebony Simmons, uh, she was awarded uh, Teacher of the Year last year, right here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And so that's that, that, that was one thing that I know about. But feel free, feel free uh, to share because we love to share what God is doing in your life so that way we can you know, share this with other people. Amen. And, 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 and that's what it's about. You know, and then that's when when, it, when when you have the opportunity to speak or whatever. You don't have to say, well, I want to thank the man above. Because people don't know who the man above is. But I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ for giving me the ability to do what I do. Amen. So today I want to give you an opportunity. If you never received Jesus in your life, what a great day to do it. We heard the gospel preached today. He committed no sin. He lived the perfect life, something that you can never, ever do. That's the gospel right there. He committed no sin, and there was no deceit found in him. That's that's the that's 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 Christ. He's he's perfect. The God man, he lived as a man. Perfect. He died as a in his 30, 33 years of age. He lived, he lived the life for you so that you wouldn't have to die on the cross to pay the penalty for the righteousness of God, to enter into his kingdom. And so he died a substitutionary death in your place. He died in your place so that you wouldn't have to face the wrath of God, and he rose again on the third day. The Bible says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? You must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe the gospel. As you today, I want to encourage you today to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But here's my second invitation. You want to you want to join the church? You want to join the church? Or you want to make some life changes? Would you let us know? You can let us know. You can text 770-655-8770. You can put it online. And let us know. Let us know how God is working in your life. And somebody will get in contact with you. And we will walk you along the way. Because that's what the church is about. Amen. Is there one today? Is there one today? Is there one today? You would need Christ in life. You want to join the church? Is there one today? You want to make some changes in your life? Amen. Is there one? Thank you, Lord, for the word. We thank you, God, for the grace that you've given us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to live as the model Christian in the workplace. Lord, we know that you call us to suffer, God. You, we know that you call us to, to uh, sainthood, God. We, we know we, you called us to uh, many things, Lord, and we just pray that, God, you will help us to do those things, Lord. Uh, we pray, God, for your blessings upon this of our service. In Jesus' name, we pray for all the decisions that have made us well. And Lord, we pray in your name we pray. Let them say amen. 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 And you may be seated. At this time, we're going to get ready to prepare our hearts for uh, the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper. Amen. So,
If you're at home, if you're at home, would you go ahead and grab your elements? Go ahead and grab your elements. We're going to be partaking of the Lord's Supper here. Here. We're going to be partaking of the Lord's Supper at this moment. So we're going to uh, call our deacons at this time, ministers. same way he took the cup also after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes therefore whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks eats and drinks judgment to himself if he do not judge the body right. Dear God, we thank you today for this time of remembrance and sharing it about your death, burial, and resurrection. Help us to examine ourselves. And Lord, we want to be able to receive the sacrament. In your son Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Now let us go ahead and stand and let us receive our elements. Amen.
Thank you so much. At this time, we're going to prepare our hearts to uh, partake of the Lord's Supper. At this time, uh, any alt that you may have against a brother or sister, um, at this time, go ahead and take. Uh, the Bible says that we should not take of the Lord's Supper. Um, if, if our hearts are not right, if there's some issues that may be unresolved. So let, at this time, let's go ahead and take about 30 seconds of, of uh, prayer internally uh, by ourselves and make sure that we're in a right relationship with the Lord. Uh, so at this time, in your own way, would you pray to the Father? church say amen amen has anyone been overlooked has anyone been overlooked would you raise your hand so make sure everyone is served all right let us hold up our bread this is symbolic of the body of the lord savior jesus christ uh, the body that was bruised the body that was beaten the body that was slain um, he bore his body on the cross for our sins thank you jesus for dying on the cross for us let us take eat Let the church say amen. Let us hold up our cup. This is symbolic of the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible says without the remission of sins, without the remission of sins, there will be no forgiveness of sins. Thank God for shedding his blood for ours uh, so that way we can experience salvation through Jesus Christ. Drink all of it. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. Our deacons are coming around to grab the elements. Amen. When we Supper. At this time, just a few announcements. We're going to take up our offering at this time, and we will be out of your way on tonight, this time. So thank you so much for your liberalities and your giving. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. At this time, we're going to get ready to give. If you need an offering envelope, would you just raise your hand, and one of our greeters will get you one. Uh, if you're visiting with us online, if you're giving online, you can give several different ways. Easy Time is one way you can give. Just download the Easy Time app, and you can give through that app. You can also text to give, text to give, 
404-390-2287. You can also text to give. You can also mail in your offerings. Thank you so much for those of you who mail in your offerings. Philadelphia Baptist Church, 6910 South Goddard Road, Lithonia, Georgia, 30038. So we thank you so much. Once again, at this time, let us go ahead and stand. Let us go ahead and stand. And let us give. Let us pray. Father God, we ask that you bless blessing upon this offering. Help it to be used for your purposes only. Bless the one that is given. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everyone say amen. Let everyone. Our greatest will direct you to the front. Jesus is the greatest man I know. Sister Tasco, Sister Tasco, who joined on last Sunday, Amen, Amen. She was, she was, got a chance to be in our Bible study. She was in our Bible study, and she's joining under watch here. So we praise God for that. Oh wow, wow. See, just got, just got word that the reason why she's not here today, uh, she had to rush her husband to the hospital. Uh, so let's keep her and her husband in prayer. Um, as we know, things are always happening. And, um, you know, sometimes you're up and you're down and up. So that's, that's life. That's life. And so let's keep her in prayer. Uh, the Tasco family. Tasco family, they joined on last Sunday. All right. So they went Bible study. They really enjoyed the Bible study. Um, and I want to say special thanks to... Um, one of Sister Chapman's friends, uh, she invited Sister Luster to join us, uh, and she's been coming on for Bible study. And you know, I wanted she sent a card just thanking us as a church for welcoming them with open arms, and uh, just want to thank God for just being able to provide a, a another avenue to reach people that some of y'all may not even see. Some people may not even see. And so that's what uh, we can do, even with technology. So let's let's praise God for that. Uh, also, want to thank our uh, brother Michael for visiting with us today. Guest, Amen. I know he's been telling me he's going to come. Good brother. Um, got a chance to play his younger brother in a game of basketball. He's 22. 22. Yeah. So he, you know, came to the house and. Um, I thought I could beat him, but I'm like, man, this this dude beat me in bad. But he's about six. He's about six two though. He's about six two. But uh, you know, he's 22 years of age. So you know, y'all know, you know, I'm, I'm a basketball player, and, and I love to play basketball. Uh, Dick and Barry, he's not in here. I didn't realize Dick and Barry still play. But uh, this dude, man, he beat me. So he must be, he must be all right. He must be all right. <laughs> he must be all right. Uh, but anyways, um, thank you so much. Please join us again. Please join us again. I uh, want to keep mother in prayer. Bar Barnwell, my mother, uh, she had surgery on uh, Tuesday. So she's at home recovering. The surgery went well, but she's at home. She can't eat, but I believe just maybe like soft food, soup, mashed potatoes, things like that. So thank you, everyone, who's reached out to just call or send a text. Uh, to provide food. Uh, thank you. That, that helps a lot. And um, so let's keep her in prayer. Let's keep uh, Sister April Smith in prayer as well, uh, who she uh, just was up and fell, fell out um, uh, on last week. So she had to go to the doctor and 
suffered a, a, a concussion at, as a result of the fall. So let's keep her in prayer as well. Uh, and let's keep all of our other members in prayer, uh, those, those who are sick and shut in, uh, who are going through various ailments or whatever, Sister uh, uh, Ogletree as well. Uh, let's keep everyone lifted up. Amen. Sister Chanel Moore as well. Let's keep her lifted up as she's had surgery. And uh, the body of Christ should be a praying people, right? We should be a praying people. Amen. Be a praying people. Uh, we sent out a message on Friday. Was everyone able to get that? They had free food in the community. Was everyone able to get that? Okay. Yeah. We, they, had, uh, we, they had free food in the community, various locations. Uh, so we, we hope, I know we got it at the last minute. That's why we sent it to you at the last minute. Uh, but, but anytime, that's, that's why you should uh, be connected so that we can get all that information out to you. So if you're not subscribed to any of our platforms, our YouTube channel, please do so. Do so. Just go to Philadelphia Baptist Stone Press and subscribe. That way you never miss a beat on our services. Also, if you if you if you visit them with us and you just want to connect with us, just fill out your information so that way we can send you stuff. That way you can stay connected. All right? All right. If all hearts are clear, we have Bible study this Wednesday at 7. You Bible study at 7. Remember, we're going to be entering into the sanctuary for Bible study uh, the 1st of June. The 1st of June. So we, we're getting ready for that. We're going to be offering both in person and virtual for Bible study. So we'll be right here uh, being able to minister the Word of God to you and sing and pray and fellowship. All right. If you're celebrating the birthday in the month of April, would you wave your hand? Or give us a virtual hand. Oh, amen. April, April birthdays. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. All right. What about anniversaries? 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 Amen. Oh, I'm sorry. This is May. This is May. This is a new month. My bad. My bad. Uh-oh. May. You celebrating a birthday in May. May. All right. May. May. Okay. There we go. May. May is in the house. What about May birth? I mean, May anniversaries. May anniversaries. May anniversaries. All right. Amen. How many years? How many years? How many years? 58 years of marriage? Oh, oh, 89? Wow, 89 years of old, birthday, wow. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Y'all see Deacon Cannon, y'all, he's 89 years of age in church. Can we put the camera on Deacon Cannon? Can we put the camera on? Is there, is there a way we can put the camera on Deacon Cannon? Amen. Let's clap our hands one more time for that, man. That's, that is amazing. That is amazing. Amen. That's Deacon Cannon right there. The Lord has been good. Would you like to say anything, man? Would you like to say, share any words? Somebody take her a mic if you can. It's not until the 14th of this month. Amen. 89 years of age. Praise the Lord. That is a blessing. Amen. So we want to just praise God for uh, God is good. He's good, and, and, and God has been good to you all, and thank you so much for your faithfulness. And, man, you know, that, that's, that gives me encouragement that, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm just aching in my body, and I'm like, no, I got to lick the digging cannon, the cannon family, because they come to church with aches and, I mean, Get pains and can't sometimes walk as like he normally, but still come to church. That's what this new generation, we need to look up to somebody like you. Amen. A soldier in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So on that note, we're going to have one of our other uh, uh, elders. Uh, he's going to come and, and, and uh, close us out in a, a word of prayer. Amen. God has blessed us with some season. Still walking. <laughs> Let us look up to God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for every word that was spoken, every song that was sung, every testimony that was given. We thank you for this service. We pray that as we leave each other, that we still be reminded that we are in your presence. Now may the Lord bless you, keep you, 
and cause his face to shine upon you and to give you peace. These things we ask in Jesus' name and the Lord's people said, amen. God bless you. Be friendly.